Just think of the satisfaction of driving on environmentally friendly, electric car for 1,500 miles without having to stop to recharge the battery. 1,500 miles, a distance four times more than the best, and most expensive model currently on the road can travel. The car equipped with a revolutionary new type of battery which unlike those used in conventional electric cars, this can also power heavy vehicles and even aircrafts. The new battery is far simpler and cheaper to make than the batteries currently in use in millions of electric vehicles in the world, and unlike them, this battery can be easily recycled. This battery is invented by British engineer and former Royal Navy officer Trevor Jackson, and he has signed a multi-million pound deal to start manufacturing the device on a large scale in the UK. Austin Electric, an engineering firm based in Britain will begin putting thousands of them into electric vehicles next year. Very few will have heard of Jackson's extraordinary invention. About which he says is that, since he and his company Metelectric came up with a prototype a decade ago, he has faced determined opposition from automobile industry authorities. They had every reason not to give chance to a competitor that may, in time render its own technology obsolete. Car industry authorities claim Trevor's technology is unproven, and its benefits exaggerated. But an independent evaluation by the government agency, UK Trade and Investment said that it was a very attractive battery based on well-established technology and that it produced much more energy per kilogram than standard electric vehicle types. Jackson has also secured capital for further research from the Advanced Propulsion Center, a partner of Department for Business, Innovation and Skills. Also his technology has been validated by two French universities. It has been a tough battle for him but he is finally making progress, from every logical viewpoint this is the way to go. In 2001, he began to investigate the potential of a technology which was first developed in the 1960s. Scientists had discovered that by dipping aluminium into a chemical solution known as electrolyte, it could trigger a reaction between the metal and air to produce electricity. At that time, the method was useless for commercial batteries because the electrolyte was extremely poisonous and caustic. After years of experimentation at his workshop in the Cornish village of Callington, Jackson's eureka moment came when he developed a new formula for the electrolyte, that was neither poisonous nor caustic. Jackson had drunk it when he demonstrated it to the investors, so that he can attest to the fact that it is harmless. Another problem with 1960s version was that it worked only with totally pure aluminium which is very expensive. But Jackson's electrolyte works with lower purity metal. The formula of electrolyte, which is top secret, is the key to his device. Technically, it should be described as a fuel cell, not a battery. Either way, it is so light and powerful that it could now be set to revolutionize low carbon transport, because it supplies so much energy. With the new deal with the Austin Motors, three immediate projects are about to go into production. The first is the manufacture for the three-wheeler taxis in the Asian market. The second is to make electric bikes, which will be cheaper and run for much longer than those made by rivals. Finally, and most importantly, the firm is to produce kits to convert ordinary petrol and diesel cars into hybrids by fitting them with aluminium air cells and electric motors on the rear wheels. A driver will be able to choose whether to run the car on fossil fuel or on electricity. This will be the stepping stone to a full-blown electric vehicle powered by aluminium air fuel cells. The car industry has already poured massive investment into a very different type of battery, lithium-ion. Almost every electric vehicles on the road uses them. But they have big drawbacks, as well as lithium, they contain rare poisonous substances such as cobalt they can explode or catch fire. With repeated charging, car-sized models eventually become spent. Recycling them to recover cobalt and lithium is extremely expensive, about five times as much as the cost of disposing them, and starting from scratch. Aluminium on the other hand is the planet's most abundant metal and once an aluminium air fuel cell is spent, it can be recycled very cheaply. Tests have shown that, weight for weight, Jackson's fuel cell produces nine times as much as energy as lithium-ion. 
The luxury electric car maker Tesla says, its Model S has a range of 370 miles from one charge. Jackson says that if we drove the same car with an aluminium air fuel cell that weighed the same as lithium-ion battery, the range would be 2,700 miles. Aluminium air cells also takes up less space. Jackson claims that if Tesla were fitted with an aluminium air fuel cell that was the same size as its current battery, it could run non-stop for 1,500 miles. Scientists call the weight to energy ratio, energy density. According to Jackson, because aluminium air fuel cells have a much greater density than lithium-ion batteries, they could be used in buses or big trucks. If powered by lithium-ion, such vehicles would be unfeasibly heavy, with the battery weighing as much as the freight. Meanwhile the raw cost of a new aluminium air cell is much lower. In a Tesla, Jackson says that the battery costs about 30,000 euros. An aluminium air fuel cell that would power the same car, for longer would cost just 5,000 euros. Drivers with cars that depend on lithium-ion, have to change the batteries from the mains when they are spent, a process that takes a long time, often overnight. But when an aluminium air cell become exhausted, the driver would simply exchange it for a new one. Instead of a vast network of charging points, all that is necessary are stores where cells can be swapped. Jackson says that swapping a battery takes just about 90 seconds, he adds that everyone knows that if we are really going to hit the government's target of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, the hardest nut to crack is transport. We are just not going to do that with lithium ion. Apart from anything else, it's no use for trucks, which burn vast amount of fossil fuel, and we, as an audience, let us hope for Jackson that he will be successful in implementing Hope you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe, and press the bell icon, thank you.